Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Brant Larson and on this video we're going to be covering the top 10 thyroid tests to run. Now, I get a lot of people in with thyroid symptoms. It's one of the most common things that we are seeing today. And here are some of the symptoms. Weight gain despite diet or exercise. Many of the people that we see, they exercise more than anybody else and they're not gaining weight and there's other reasons for that. Sleep problems, hot flashes, fatigue. This here is probably the number one thing I see on new patient forms is people are just fatigued. They don't have the energy to keep going at night, especially after a long day of work. Their kids suffer from it, their family suffers, and they're really frustrated with it. We have cold hands, cold feet, or just being cold in general because your thyroid runs your metabolic furnace. So it keeps things going. We have depression, brain fogs. Now we're seeing brain changes and brain issues, and that's very scary for a lot of people, um, knowing that you know, pre-dementia, dementia, Alzheimer's is on like a rise, like a shooting star. It's amazing how much brain destruction people are suffering today. And we have thinning of hair. Infertility, I've helped a number of couples successfully conceive a child after five, you know, six, eight years of just not being able to get anywhere with it no matter what they did. And then we have bowel changes like constipation. So thyroid disorders are very, very common. And one researcher uh, looked at it and he said, you know what, it's 90% of women age 40 and up. So chances are, you watching this video, you have some type of symptom here or maybe several of them. So we're going to talk about the thyroid tests that you need run because here's another gripe, a complaint that I hear from new patients coming in. I have people crying, I have people mad, I have people swearing, I have people reeling all the things that their doctor has told them over the years, 5, 10, 15 years in some cases, and they're fed up. And you, you, you may be as well fed up with, you know, your thyroid panel is normal, yet you don't feel normal. And we're going to, you know, Talk about why that is in a second here. So, what tests are commonly checked? So, what do most thyroid panels consist of? Usually it's just one thing, but here I listed two. So, TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, and then maybe a free T4. So, what is TSH? TSH is a brain hormone, and it's again thyroid stimulating hormone. So, the name says what it does it stimulates the hormone or the, the, the thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormone, mainly T4 and T3. Those are the two main hormones. Now when you, when you take thyroid medication, you're taking T4 usually, synthetic T4. Okay, But this is the active hormone and that's going to come into play here in a few minutes. Have you been told your lab tests are all normal? Yes, I know you have because so many people call me on the, on the phone, come in the office, and this is what they've been told. Your lab thyroid panel is normal, and yet the person says, yeah, but I don't feel normal. I have weight gain, I have infertility, I have all those things that we, that we mentioned before, yet the lab tests are normal. Now, the first thing to understand before I get into the other eight tests to run for the thyroid, the first thing to understand, because there's kind of two parts to this. One, you're not getting enough tests. You're not getting the full thyroid panel. But two, the lab ranges of what they're looking at are, are not right. Okay? They're inaccurate. And not necessarily inaccurate, but just it's based off of an ever-sickening population, so they're too wide. You want, you want to know, hey, is this normal? Is it optimal, healthy functioning of a human being? You, you don't want some drastically wide range that says, yeah, you're okay, you're fine, deal with it, go on, right? You want to know what's normal and optimal for a healthy, functioning human being. Bell-shaped curves are used. So a bell-shaped curve you know, looks like this. It comes down, it comes to the sides. And what they do is, they, is all the people that come in for a lab test over the course of a year, they average that out, they see the highs and the lows, and this bell-shaped curve, uh, curve happens. So what they do is they chop off like two or three percent on the on the high end and two or, uh, or three, two or three percent on the low end. All right, and this now becomes your normal. But yet that normal is too far away from that midline. It's just too it's too wide, and we'll see that here in a second. So this is why your lab values are normal, but you still feel sick because you may be outside of that range that should be normal. Okay. You need a functional lab value because they're more sensitive. Now here's what it looks like. 
Here is the functional lab range in this white. This is where you should be. This is optimal, healthy function for a human. Just remember that. That's what this is. Now, if your lab value is a little bit lower and a little bit higher, in some cases much higher, much lower, in this yellow range, you're considered by your doctor as normal. That's normal, healthy functioning for a human, but it's not. As soon as it gets down to the red here, now it's going to register. Okay? Abnormal low, abnormal high in the red. But so many people are in this yellow range. And this is not normal. You have a problem that's happening and you're being told that you're normal but you're not normal. So here, let's look at one marker. So TSH, this is what you're getting run, right? So here's the lab normal. 0.5 to 5.5. Remember that number here. 0.5 to 5.5. A wide, wide range, right? Here's optimal. 0.35 to 2.0. So what if you're 2.5, 3.0, 3.5, 5.4, 5 5.1? You're considered normal. But yet your body isn't performing optimally because there's published research that says anything above a 2.0 could be considered a thyroid condition or even an autoimmune condition, or be suggestive of one. Anything above two. So from two to 5.5, three and a half there. They're considering that normal, yet your body is not functioning how it's supposed to. And you could have all the symptoms. You could have infertility. You could have constipation, depression, brain fog, cold hands, cold feet. You, you can't lose weight, fatigue. You could have all those things if you're outside of here, if you're here. You don't have to be way over here for your, you to start to have problems because you're not functioning how you're supposed to in this yellow range, okay? So, carry on. What tests really need to be checked? So, we understand now that typically they're running one or maybe two tests. Every now and then I'll see someone that's run more, but it's very few and far between. It's usually just TSH or just TSH and free T4. That's usually it. Number two, what you understand now, is that the lab ranges are too wide. So you even could have a full panel, but they're using lab ranges that are way out here. So they're going to miss a lot of things, okay? Now, three is, let's understand that you need to have more testing done, and I'll show you why. So, TSH and free T4, obviously, we, we have to have, uh, run those. You need free T3. This is the most metabolically active thyroid hormone. Right? I said T4 is inactive, T3 is the active. Then we have total T4 and total T3, okay? So break it down here. TSH from the brain stimulates your thyroid to make T4 and T3. Now, 93% roughly of what your thyroid makes is T4, and it makes about 7% T3, okay? Now understand this. This here is the inactive hormone. So what do you need T3 to do? It, it, it's not just a matter of, oh, I have T3, right? No, it has to bind with the cells of the body. Every single cell in your body, to your eyes, to your liver, to your skin, everywhere. You need to bind T3 to those cells to make it do its job. T4 doesn't do anything there, right? It needs to be T3. So why would your thyroid gland make 93% T4 and 7% T3, right? And why would you not be checking for T3 and some of these other markers? Because this is what's important down here. Now, here's where it opens up. T4 needs to be converted to T3. And this conversion happens in the liver and the gut. All right? So now, I'm going to show you 10 thyroid tests that you need. But a smart person here is thinking. They're thinking, wait a minute here. I need to know what my liver's doing. And I need to know how my gut is functioning. There's tests and there's, there's things to do for these as well, right? Because let's say my lab's normal. I have T4, but I'm not converting to T3. This takes place here. So you need to know what's going on here. And I'll tell you what, the vast majority of Americans today have a messed up gut. The liver is overworked, it's toxic, it's sluggish. We see it on lab tests all the time, okay? So you, it's opening from beyond those 10 tests that I talked about at the very beginning of this video, it's beyond 10. Okay, just understand that. So that conversion doesn't happen, and then you don't make active T3. So you have to look at liver function, gut function, 
inflammatory markers. Even your blood sugar plays into that. It, 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 it plays into how your gut functions. It plays into how your brain functions. It plays into how your liver functions. Okay, everything in the body works together. It's not just one system. You don't just have a thyroid problem. Okay, you don't just have rheumatoid arthritis. You don't just have infertility. You have a body breakdown. Okay, you have to look at the whole picture here. So, another test to run. T3 uptake, free thyroxin index. I'm not going to talk about those two here. But reverse T3 we will talk about. This one's interesting. Remember, I said T3 is the metabolic engine of your body. It's the, it's the hormone that you want to run the show, bind with the cells, tell the DNA what to do. But your body can also make reverse T3. It's like the exact opposite copy. So if T3 revs metabolism, our T3 just shuts it off and does nothing, right? It's the brakes of the body. Now, why would you want that to happen? Here we go. Stress produces reverse T3. Okay? and will block T3 receptors. So this reverse T3 will bind with the cell membrane, right? where T3 is supposed to bind and tell the cell what to do. It'll bind there, it'll take up the T3 receptors and just basically shut them off. It just neutralizes them. So your cells, the brakes get put on. Now why would you want this? It's important here. So T4, T3 is not happening. Your brain does this on purpose. It's not dumb. It's not confused. It does this for a very specific reason. Has anyone here, everyone, I, well, I know everyone has had the flu, a cold, whatever it may be. What did you feel like doing? You wanted to lay down and shut the lights off or watch TV and just rest because you were exhausted. That's because you had acute shunting of T4 to reverse T3. Your body did it on purpose because they had a stress. A chemical stress such as an infection, could be heavy metals, various other chemical poisons, mental emotional stress, and physical stress. When you hear stress, you can no longer think mental emotional stress only. That's not the only stress in this world. Chemical stress, right? Chemicals that are in our lives, in our bodies, in our food, right? Infections. These are all stressors on the body, and the body perceives them all the same way. A stress is a stress is a stress, no matter where it's coming from. So it's doing this to slow down the cells, to conserve energy. So that's a really good, great process when you have the flu or a cold. Get you to sit down and stop going out and doing all the things that you want to do and pounding you know, energy drinks and you know, six cups of coffee every day to keep yourself going and wired, right? It's, it's shutting you down. Now, but this happens chronically as well. If you have chronic chemical poisoning, which we see a lot of, you'll see reverse T3 on the lab tests go high because the body is shunting. It says, we have a, we have a chronic stress here. This person needs, my, my body needs to shut down. It needs to heal and repair. I need the energy for, to, to, to do those functions. I can't have energy to go out there and running around and taking the kids to soccer practice and all these things. I need the energy to heal. It's trying to save your life, okay? It'll, it takes it away from here down to RT3. I see RT3 high on quite a few tests, right? And it's never run. It's so important. You have a chronic stress of some kind, maybe one or two or three combined, that are happening to shut your body down. Again, I say this to all my patients, your body is not stupid. It's not dumb. It knows exactly what it's doing at all times. It's very, very smart given the circumstances. We just don't listen. We don't listen to those circumstances. Two more tests to run. Thyroid peroxidase antibodies and thyroglobulin antibodies. So when you see antibodies here, what you're seeing is immune system. This is an autoimmune condition. 90% roughly what the research shows of thyroid conditions are autoimmune. Immune problem right here. TPO and TGB antibodies we run on everybody because they are so prevalently high. We've had people who are infertile, having all kinds of issues. Doctors said that their lab tests were normal, normal for five, six, eight, ten years. We run, we, we run these, these two right here, bam, sky high. It's an immune system issue. How long do you want to take a thyroid medication for when it's not your thyroid? It's the immune system attacking the thyroid, right? The thyroid is secondary. The immune system is primary in this case, 
Okay, and we see a lot of this. A lot of people have this issue. And there's various reasons for it that I won't cover on the video today. But So, question for you here. What would you rather have? This? Or would you have this? This over here is considered your thyroid panel, right? And time after time after time, I get people's records. We look at it. My thyroid's normal. Yes, I had a thyroid panel done. I talked to people on the phone. I had a thyroid panel done. Send me your records. Sure enough, usually it's just number one here, TSH. Sometimes it's a few other ones as well. But do they run TPO antibodies, TGB antibodies? No. Do they run reverse T3? No. When we run those tests, we see the problem unfold. And then we run liver function. We run inflammatory markers. We run, we run blood sugar, kidney function, adrenal function. Okay, The whole body plays them together. And you see this picture unfold of why that person has been suffering so long, yet no one's finding the answers because it's this tunnel vision of, oh, your thyroid's fine. And all they're doing is checking TSH. And it's a really, really sad story. And it's the reason I make these videos because you need to know this information. You need to know what's happening to you and why you're not feeling well. <clears throat> now, the last one here, we're not done yet, right? So we have all the thyroid tests you're not getting run. We're ha we, we see the lab values are not really accurate. We see that you need liver function testing now. We need blood sugar. We need kidney function. We need adrenal function, gut function, gallbladder. We have immune markers as well. We run a full panel on people. Okay, that's, that, that's the point because your body works as an entire dynamic system. It doesn't work as little pieces and parts all over the place. So here's the last puzzle, piece of the puzzle here that no one ever gets. Here is your cell. Okay, and this red part here is, is the cell membrane. And these little blue things here, those are the mitochondria. Those produce energy. You can see all about that on different videos that I've done. Inside the middle, you have your DNA. Now, I, I mentioned before, T3 is your active thyroid hormone. But it doesn't matter if it's sitting out here. It needs to bind to that membrane and go in here and tell the DNA what to do. It needs to tell the DNA what to do. It doesn't do any good sitting out in your bloodstream. It makes no bit of difference. This is called thyroid hormone resistance. When your cells can't get it inside of them, and we have tests that we run for this as well, 50 times more accurate than a blood test. We have some in-office testing that we do. Okay, you want these tests done. Because it'll show you, wow, is, is my cell membrane dead, dying, and inflamed? That's why I have it red here. Big old fat red inflamed thing because it's inflamed. And this T3 can't bind here. Okay? Now think of it this way. I have a good analogy for this. It's no different than a car. A car needs gasoline in the gas tank to get into the engine as well to run the machinery, to make your car go forward. Same thing with T3. Doesn't do any good if that, if that T3 is sitting outside the cell. It makes no bit of difference. It has to get inside the cell. So imagine if we're on, on, on fumes. We're, you and I are driving, and we pull up to a gas station, and we're on fumes, and we kind of coast into the gas station right next to the gas pump here, and we run on gas. And we get out, and we're going to go put gas in there, in the gas tank, but the door to the gas tank is rusted shut. Okay, it's inflamed, it's oxidized, same process here, it's inflamed. So the door to the gas tank is rusted shut. So we get the bright idea of putting, just pouring the gas on top of the car. Okay, thinking that it's going to matter and get inside the, inside the car. It isn't, obviously. You need it inside the gas tank to get into the engine, to, 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 to run the pistons and everything to make the car go. Okay, it's no different than your cell. Many of you are taking T4 synthetic thyroid hormone. One, your gut and your liver can't make the conversion, but let's say they do. Let's say you do make T3. So you have all this T3 sitting outside here, but every cell membrane in your body is completely inflamed. It's toxic, it's inflamed, it's not working right. And I'll tell you what, we see this a lot. A lot of people have toxic, inflamed cell membranes. So it makes no bit of difference how much T3 you got out here, because if you can't get it in the cell, it doesn't matter. You need to get it in the cell to run this machinery. So I hope you understand. Recap again. We've got all the 10 thyroid tests. We have all the inflammatory markers, the liver markers, the blood sugar, the, the 
the gut function, the kidney, the adrenal, the immune markers. We have the immune markers for the thyroid, the autoimmune markers. We have cell function testing, okay? Again, it's a whole big picture, but at the very least, get the right 10 tests for your thyroid, right? Here's our office number. Uh, again, I'm Dr. Brant Larson from Larson Wellness Center. I hope you learned something on this video. If you are someone who's struggling, you're looking for answers, you're fed up with it, you want some help, some one-on-one -on -one help to get you from where you are now to where you want to go, give the office a call, set up a consultation with me, and uh, we'll get on the phone, we'll talk about it, and we'll see if, if we're a right fit, if I can help in any way. Again, I'm Dr. Brant Larson. Uh, here's the number right here, and I'll see you soon.